I'm Damon Zell, this is Echoes from the Front, and it's time for your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update. And always, if you could please tag that subscribe button and ring that bell, then you can stay up to date with everything unfolding within Echoes. Well, I want to start off today with addressing feedback from last week's video, specifically my coverage of Elysium and Genesis. First, my news cycles are usually from Saturday to Friday. This gives me Saturday and Sunday to record and edit and to have these videos up by Monday. This video did get delayed, however, but I will touch on that at the end. Therefore, two of the lemmings in my comments saying how I did not cover the battle accurately. Well, you're right, because I didn't cover that battle. The Royal Rumble at BZ will be covered later on in this video as last week's was just the coverage of the Grail Warfare Elysium was doing. I note that in the last week's attacks, yes, Genesis did come ahead, it's positive, while Legion did have more kills. Also, I would just like to say that those of us content creators focusing on events and news can only go off of the intel that is given to us until there is an actual API and kill board which nullifies the whole he said, she said arguments. Okay, so we had our weekly maintenance, and when the service came back up, a lot of us retreated to having enough skill points to hit that tech level 7. The reason behind this was that skill point bug compensation round 2. Remember about 3 weeks ago when we got that 200,000k skill points? Well, this is that second round that they talked about back on the 28th, to bring players who didn't benefit from that bug more in line with those that did. Now, on September 16th, each and every player was compensated with the difference between the extra skill points that were given out and the maximum extra skill points. So if one player maxed out at around 400,000 skill points from that bug, and that player was the highest beneficiary of that bug, and another player had the difference of, say, 200,000 from that 400,000 player, then they received that 200,000 as the additional compensation. With this patch, they fixed a number of bugs as well as improvements. One of these improvements is the online autopilot. No longer will you just jump into a system and autopilot will try to speed you on your path. Now, when it jumps you into a system, it will load all assets within that system before initiating that warp. This will help players in two ways. If you are having a latency problem and are slow to load assets, you won't be immediately targeted and scrammed before everything loads. There have been a number of players talking about how when they jumped into a system and before anything loaded, they found themselves in a pod. The second way this helps is if you are watching your autopilot and you jump through into a gate camp, you can now shut off your autopilot and hold that cloak for a few precious more seconds. You can then decide if you should jump back, stand and fight, or make a break for it. That fun bug where you warp into a station, and I do mean into a station, has been fixed. So no more colliding into the station and getting stuck. They also claim that they fixed the sentry guns by giving them a little more range than before. Whether this will fix the issue with players speed tanking the sentry guns to allow their gang to gate camp without getting blown up by Concord in Losec remains to be seen. However, there was a bug with the sentry guns in Losec systems that became bumpable this week, allowing pilots to bump them out of range to make those gate camps even more deadly. A hotfix has been implemented as of today, so no longer can you bump those uh, sentry guns out of the way. One cannot deny the genius behind these pirates coming up with new tactics to catch their prey, though. A few graphical glitches have been popping up since the patch, such as the endless warp animation. This glitch shows that warp animation going on even after you've landed into a new system. This can usually be remedied by just jumping into another system or by docking in a station. You won't be able to see up top if any ships are close to you, but your overview menu still works, so use this to navigate to a station or another system to correct it. And this brings me to the overview bug that is not game breaking, but it's just downright annoying. It's just that the settings within the tabs have either been reset, or they're just not keeping from login to login. Making a new tab also doesn't keep after logging sometimes. We were treated to two dev videos giving us a look into what to expect in the future, as well as the current strides they are taking to curb, RMT, and bots, as well as issue fixes. In the first video, we hear from developers Exile and Kai. Exile tells us how Echo's being on a mobile platform is more susceptible to scripts and bots, 
and so far they have banned approximately 150,000 accounts. These accounts were involved using exploits for profit, including the use of plugins and scripts, as well as abusing the refund system. They are working hard to provide us with a healthy economy free from those abusing the game to give us a great gaming experience. Kai tells us that to help fix the congestion, they have made several improvements to the allocation of server resources as well as Stargate efficiency. They plan to increase the player cap of some systems and add time dilation to further reduce congestion. Kai also informs us that they are working on the desync issue that's been plaguing us all. They plan on increasing the ship loading rendering efficiency to further reduce lag in those big PvP battles. In the second video, we hear from Melos and Nero about the future of the game. Melos tells us that they are working on giving us hangar logs for corporations, and that this is proving to be a little difficult because of how many items are being moved around, but they will get it to us as soon as possible. Another great bit of info is that Alliance management skills will be coming to increase Alliance sizes to 30 corporations, and introducing fleet sizes of 50 pilots. Nero comes in and tells us that they have received feedback from the community, and as such, they will be doing a round of balancing. Two of these items were that drones being too scarce and high in price, and that missiles were proving to be too powerful. Do I smell missile nerf coming? Nero understands that any tweak they do can have serious economic repercussions, so they plan on only doing these balancing between two to three times a year. Nero states that the first major content patch will be in November, and at that time they'll look at ships which are popular, which are not, and will use this info as well as community feedback via AMA on Discord to base their balance changes around. NPC pirate ranks will be introduced into the many factions of New Eden, which will work around a new AI system planned for these rats. Also, a little content for you haulers out there, where you can help transport goods for NPCs and possibly earn module blueprints for your trouble. Within the last few days, we learned about some changes proposed due to the community disapproval of the autopilot fix. This vote is now live, and a link can be found in the description. My thoughts and a breakdown of these choices I've gone over in a previous video. Plex has continued to drop and level off around 155 to 166,000. However, is now starting to creep back up into the 170,000 range. With hitting Tech 7, we saw for a few days an increased spike in module sales as most pilots were scrambling to grab that MK7 gear. Prices that seen a sharp rise were drone blueprints going from 50 million to 100 million, but have since come back down the line with everything else on the market. Reports that faction cruiser sales were extremely high, and due to the market costs, sellers were not making as much profit as initially thought. Assault frigates, which are new to the market, started at 100 million, but have since come down around 70 million for each faction. Mineral prices soared, especially with Pyrite, Sindarin, and Noxium, as much more are needed to build battlecruisers. And speaking of battlecruisers, you can now find them selling anywhere from 600 to 900 million on the market. This has been your weekly market report. This has been a very busy week for Genesis Federation, as it seems that all of New Eden has set their sights on them. This busy week started off with what I'm calling the Royal Rumble at BZ Tech Zero GW. Now I spoke to all parties involved and this is what went down. This battle started off on the 12th at around 1630 UTC with Elysium, Opposing Force and a small coalition of five other alliances engaging Genesis. According to Genesis, the enemy fleets numbered at 234 with 96 at Opposing Force, 100 Elysium and 38 from the rest. GenFed was able to field a defense force of 175 pilots. These hostile counts are estimates based on GenFed scouts. Prior to engaging in BZ, the hostiles staged in the neighboring system and had 234 in that system before entering BZ. The on-field commanders was Kanos Kerinsky for Genesis Federation, Ragnar and Britonic for opposing force. A few days leading up to this fight, Genesis Federation was informed of opposing forces called to arms for this planned assault. Genesis leadership team made the presumption that the operation was a continuation of the previous ambush and siege of BZ by the joint forces of Elysium and opposing force, and called a defensive action. Leadership also hoped that this would be the case and that the operation wasn't against a different entity. Previously. 
Genesis was unaware of Elysium being a combatant and were caught off guard when their fleet arrived, augmented by opposing force. The hope was this time this was a confirmed event against Genesis Federation and that they would get a fight. Hours prior to the scheduled operation, opposing force called for an earlier form-up in an attempt to disrupt Genesis Federation's formation of a defense. Junior Fleet Commander Twilight formed a defensive fleet for Genesis Federation and blockaded the system entrance between 1600 and 1700 UTC. At 1715 UTC, the senior commander assumed control of the Genesis fleet and formed a defensive posture in BZ on the station itself. At 1745, Hostile forces began to enter the system in low numbers. Opposing forces numbers were estimated at just below 100, and their forces moved in and out of the system and eventually regrouped in a neighboring system. Just prior to 1800 UTC, scouts reported approximately 100 more hostiles moving towards BC, followed by a smaller group of around 25 to 30. Prior to the engagement, hostile forces rallied one system out and totaled 234 in local. Hostiles were a mix of cruisers and destroyers with frigate support. At approximately 1820 UTC, hostiles engaged at BZ on the station. Now, they came on the grid in four distinct locations, pincering the Genfed fleet. However, the full force of the enemy fleet did not materialize on the station due to unknown reasons. It appeared there was a communication issue with the fleets arriving on the station. From Genesis Federation, Battle Report, and Recordings, all major groups arrived on the scene. However, the primary force was opposing force, and there was a significant lack of Elysium arriving on the station. The Genesis fleet maneuvered, destroying one of the smaller enemy elements, and proceeded to move about the field, engaging each group, systematically destroying or forcing them off the field. Opposing force left the field shortly after their fleet commander Ragnar was destroyed by the Genesis fleet. The last remaining force on the field was opposing forces Red Corporation, who also reformed and came back to skirmish. Genesis does not speculate how or why the full enemy force did not arrive on the station at the same time. They only know that more than half arrived and then smaller elements of 10 to 20 went on and off the station for the first few moments of the battle. Within 10 minutes of engaging, multiple enemy ships were destroyed and approximately 50 hostiles abandoned the system leaving opposing force alone on the station to fight Genesis. Now, according to Genesis Federation, based on their killmares and their posted losses for compensation, the best estimate, according to them, for the battle is as follows. 54 hostiles destroyed, totaling 442 million ISK. 15 allies lost, totaling 200 million ISK. The majority of the allied ISK lost was from warp disruptors and cruiser pilots who disconnected and floated out towards the enemy alone while the majority of the hostile is destroyed was from cruisers and a couple warp disruptors. As an additional note, lag was a serious issue for both sides. They have been informed enemy ships died disconnected just as theirs did. They can confirm multiple disconnects happening, including squad commanders, causing a significant disruption in maneuvering and organization during this battle. After the Genesis Federation main fleet stood down, new small fleets were formed up around 40 pilots in destroyers and frigates and gave chase specifically to opposing force back into their space. Twilight took that group out along with some other junior leaders and camped opposing force in their station. They got a few kills, but mostly the opposing force logged off or stayed docked. Doomsday of opposing force states that the battle at BZ was a goof, also that their allies were there for fun they came to have some fun too. As opposing force arrived, all of their allies wrapped up their ops and left. They had over 500 on the gate right before they engaged, then allies decided they were done and they went down to 150. Genesis of course only showed the pictures of their 500 plus mob and claimed that they were defeated even though they uh, outnumbered them. Doomsday does admit that they indeed get, did get beat up, losses somewhere near 500 million, Genesis reports they only lost about 220 million, but that's an unverified number according to Doomsday. Then Genesis went and camped a random station. Popped a few people there, but it wasn't their main station, so the kills weren't just their guys. BZ was a very improperly planned op, as was supposed to be just for fun because their original targets 
logged off as they were an Asian corporation. So they redirected to BZ with little to no preparation. Then they got bailed on by their allies due to them already being there for a long time. According to the Elysium Alliance, there wasn't much to report really. Genesis refused to leave the vicinity of their station, an opposing force pressed the attack. They prepared to follow, however they did not commit to the fight directly as the server lag was approaching the crashing point. Multiple emulator users reported frame rates of 3 to 5. Local had hit over 500 when entering the system and opposing force entered the grid causing a substantial lag spike that convinced the Elysium FC that entering the grid would likely render the game unplayable for any involved. They returned home, advising opposing force do the same. Opposing force took minimal losses while attempting to free itself from the lag spike, and the number of Elysium losses was actually just one covert ops pilot. Those who fought the final battles of the open beta tests said this was more pronounced lag than then, and that it had similar local counts. That being said, the Elysium Coalition later pressed the attack, as well as some unaffiliated alliances, over the next several hours. The death toll is unknown for these further actions. As to that one covert ops pilot that was destroyed by Genesis, this pilot was supposed to be the anchor warp-in for Elysium. However, due to the lag spike, by the time his frame rate came back up, he was sitting in a pod. On the 18th, Genesis Federation was attacked again in BZ, this time by a fleet of 40 cruisers plus a few frigates. Genesis was able to scramble 110 pilots to mount a defense, killing what they're claiming as 496 million worth plus one battlecruiser, a Can U. The estimated total defeated before the force retreated was 25. The attacking parties were Bob of the Avalanche. Alliance, EOC of Elysium, EOJ, JCF, TRY from Old Terra, IMLJ, Sour, W303 from Eternal Armada, R from CIS, MIA, which is a corporation, not an alliance, but they're working with Old Terra, ODST, NEEC, that one's the Chinese alliance. They push those people back with minimal losses. Genesis Federation was attacked again on the 19th, this time by eight alliances. Opposing Force, Elysium, Trimark, Avalanche, CIS, Eternal Armada, and OG. Statements made by Genesis suggest that Trimark was duped into this fight on the belief that they were going to be hitting Goon. As for con fellow content creator Sovereign RPG's alliance, Avalanche, they were just looking for a good fight. Avalanche had a good showing, fielding 40 to 50 battlecruisers. And from what I was told, the attack fell apart, leading to the withdrawal of all forces, with only Red again staying to fight. No one could question the pride and honor of Red, fighting outnumbered 200 to their 20. In this reporter's opinion, Genesis Federation had quite a week, playing solid defense, and many alliances may have underestimated the overall force that is Genesis. Who we thought they were! And that's why we took the damn field! Now... If you want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook. Opinions aside, the fact remains that if you want a good fight, you should pay them a visit. At this time, both Trimark and Avalanche have been added to hostile lists, thusly are now red to Genesis. War continues in the North between the Silent Alliance and the North Coalition. For those unfamiliar with North, North was founded by a complete accident by an ex-Pandemic Legion, Black Legion member who joined the Corp one day for that 500,000 skill point bonus and woke up to find themselves the CEO one morning and decided to make something of it. They span two alliances currently of NORF, the Northern Federation, and NERF, the Northern Syndicate. They are indeed in, currently in conflict of interest with the Asylum Alliance over territorial disagreements. They are also working with a large coalition of Chinese corporations who call the North their home. In the beginning of this war, there was mainly harassment going on both sides. With the news of the Silent Alliance's outpost placement, this gave North a solid target to hit. From reports, North attacked this installation with a fleet of 83, which Mr. Paywin says could be an exaggeration, as he only saw the local count of 48 before they jumped into system. 
as Mr. Pay to Win joked on talking in stations this weekend, saying that the North came at them with a new type of ship, called the Frigate Wreck. Reports state that North jumped into the system and stayed on gate, where they were picked off by silent forces. A statement from a North official said, We did just lose a frigate fleet to them today in a bit of a blunder, which they'll likely hype up more than it actually cost us. During this war, expensive kills have been taken on both sides. Now, another planned attack on the Silent Outpost was planned, but by the time the attack was launched, the Silent Alliance, in a strategic move, had already pushed it into reinforcement themselves, to pick the time when it comes out of reinforcement. Upon learning of this, the large North Force moved to its camping station within the Silent Alliance's borders and got a few high-value targets. This war continues, and no peace looks to be within sight. In the realm of large kills, I was contacted by a pilot named Siren, who is with Unity of the Forgotten Alliance, who provided this worm kill of over 700 million, with only a Comorant Navy issue and a Condor 2. Looks like they're doing some good things over there. Also, the Crimson Null Kingdom shared with me this absurdly high kill mail of 2.1 billion isk cinnable. That is a very high kill, and it seems like the Kingdom is making some great newsworthy content so I'll be keeping my eye on them for things to come. Lastly, we have the first fully defended and powered station kill in Echoes by the Terran Federation. Now I say first defended, but technically it's the second station to fall. The first was undefended and taken down by a small force. This station was not powered, so there were no timers to deal with. The first station was taken down by ZTH Corp of the Worst Alliance. Both of these stations belong to the Sway Corp within the Collective Alliance. A spokesman from Terran Federation gave a statement on the operation. This was a three-phase assault that took roughly a week and many early morning raids. The station was heavily defended as TF took in a 100-plus pilot fleet with more than 200 defending. Local count at the height of the battle hit over 400. During this final assault, many other alliances came in to either defend or snag the kill for themselves. Happy Bees had several members on grid with a few battle cruisers. Terran Federation intel identified the majority of the Happy Bees were actually gate camping the exit of the system as the battle raged on. Close to the end, Happy Bees buzzed into the battle to try and score kills on both sides. PIBC warped in on the other side of the station with mere seconds left to try and steal the kill. After the destruction of the outpost, Terran Federation pilots eagerly awaited the posting of the kill mail, unsure if PEIBC had managed to swoop their prize away. The Terran Federation would like to salute everyone involved, but a special shout out to the Collective. Thank you for providing us all with amazing content and for your sportsmanship throughout all phases. The station exploded with a gorgeous display of fireworks, and the total amount of the kill was 4.2 billion ISK. 171.8 million system value and ships alone killed, plus the 4.2 billion uh, outpost and 86 kills with an estimated 8 losses, according to the Terran Federation after, after action report. That's it for this episode, but if you need more news during the week, please be sure to check out the ENN for your short bursts of breaking news at Sovereign RPG's channel. For news and interviews, be sure to check out the Echoes of New Eden podcast with your host, Sean. And lastly, check out frequent broadcasts during the week of EER News, which is EveEchoesRadio.com's live news broadcast and features community news and updates. Also, I would like to say I know this episode is a day late, but it does seem that I was able to collect more news than usual. Also, I would like to say I know this episode is a day late, but it does seem that I was able to collect more news than usual. In the comments, let me know if you would like future episodes to air on Tuesdays rather than Mondays. As always, your enemy can never disrupt you from within a pod. Fly safe.